Hey fellow gliders, welcome back. I'm Robert Petito and in this video we're going to take a look at how to send an email to trigger an automation in your Glide app and why it might be useful to do so. So in our example today we're going to take a look at this receipt scanner that I already built in a previous video. I'm going to link that in the description below. But in this particular app in order to add the receipt to your app you have to actually push a button, attach an image, hit submit, and then we have some AI that's looking at that receipt and parsing it out into some of the details that you see here in the list. In today's video, we wanna save ourselves a step. Let's say, for example, we have an email and attached to that email, we have some invoices that we want to just forward to our app. We can do that now in Glide with a particular trigger known as email trigger. So if I head over to my workflows section in my app and start a new workflow, there's lots of triggers to pick from. And in today's video, we are gonna hone in on the email trigger. So to get started, we're just gonna go ahead and click on email. And as you see, the top of our workflow here has our email trigger. You see the trigger uses one update. And if you want to provide it some test data, we can. That way we're not having to send emails all the time. And above these test data fields, we have our magic email address. If anybody emails this address, it'll initiate this automation, this workflow, with that email as the source data. So what's neat is that there's lots of different elements to that email that we can kind of parse out and use in our workflow. Uh, they start you off with an add row action and ultimately this is what we want right when we send an email to our workflow we want the workflow to ultimately add a row to our expense log with that invoice attached so if i click on add row we can select our table to where we want the add row to happen and we want it in our items table and ultimately we want the invoice to land in this image or this file field if i hit these four dots, we see there are lots of different fields from our email that we can pick from and use throughout this workflow. If you look carefully though, you're not gonna see attachments in here and attachments is what we really want for this particular workflow. And that's because in order to target any of the attachments, we have to loop through them because a singular email could potentially have multiple attachments. All right, so before we have our add row, we have to loop through the attachments to see if those attachments are indeed an invoice of some sort. All right, so let's go ahead and add a loop. To do that, we're gonna hit the plus button here in our workflow, go to flow, and then choose loop. We're gonna drag our loop to the top of our workflow, and we don't want to loop through this user section. We want to loop through the attachments. So when I select what we're looping through over on the right hand side, our source will be not users and not any of these other tables, but rather our trigger, which is our email. And our trigger in this case, we can loop through the headers of the email file, or we can loop through the attachments. And this is what we want to do. We want to loop through the attachments. So I'll select attachments. We'll give it a limit of 10. I doubt that we're going to have 10 attachments in an email to loop through, but if, if you want to increase that, you certainly could. Uh, we're going to name this loop through attachments. And now this loop is going to loop through the attachments one at a time. And so any subsequent actions that we add within this loop will have the context of the attachment of the email. All right, first thing we have to do is determine what's the content of the attachment. When you're looping through attachments, it's going to recognize those files as URLs. We're going to go ahead and assume that the attachments that are added in here are files, PDFs or documents of some sort. So we're going to add an action. And in order to get the contents of the PDF, we can use some AI. So we're going to head over to our AI menu and Glide has all of these preset AI actions that we can pick from. And we're gonna choose document to text in order to get the contents of the document. So we'll do document to text. We'll rename this um, attachment content. And the document is going to be our loop through attachments. Okay, so if there are four attachments, it's gonna loop through them one at a time and get the content for each of them. Next, we can use some more AI 
to ask whether or not the contents of this document appear to be an invoice or an attachment. So we're going to add another action, AI, and choose text to Boolean. Boolean is basically a true false value. Okay. And the instructions will be, does the content of this document or of this attachment appear to be a receipt or invoice? And our input will be our attachment content. All right, we'll rename this to is receipt. And this will result in either a true or a false. If it's false, we'll just do nothing. But if it's true, we want to continue on with our action sequence. So we're going to add an action. And we have to have a condition now. So we're going to add a condition from our flow menu. And we're going to ask to see, is the is receipt true? Is it checked? If so, we'll continue on. Else, we'll do something else. Uh, and for our action purposes today, I'm probably going to just delete this else branch, which means that if someone sends us an attachment and the or if someone sends us an email and there are multiple attachments and some of those attachments don't appear to be invoices it'll just skip those and keep looping through the rest next what we have to do is grab the invoice number of the attachment to make sure we're not re-adding something we've already added before so we can use another glide ai column and we can do a generate text the instructions will be extract the invoice number from this attachment. Uh, then we want to make sure that it's not going to give us like all like the, the niceties like, sure, here's your invoice number and then give us something, right? So um, the little combination of text I like to use is no explanation, terse output. Terse means as short as possible. Okay. So ultimately, this is going to give us just the invoice number. Okay. Uh, and the input here will be our um, attachment content. And we'll rename this to be invoice number from attachment. So now that we have the invoice number, we need to query our existing items to make sure that it doesn't already exist in our database. And that'll be like our little check. So we're going to add an action. We're going to search for query. We're going to do a query column here. And the query action, our source will be our items. And we're going to filter to where the invoice number of our existing receipts is. And then we want the uh, invoice number from attachment. As long as the query is empty, meaning it didn't find a match, then we want to add the row. If it did find a match, that means that we've already added this receipt at some point and we shouldn't add it again. So we need one last condition. So we're going to add another condition here. And we're going to say, if our query is empty, then we'll finally add this row. Else we'll do nothing. We can just delete the else branch here. Okay, we're gonna to add to items, and the image that we're gonna add here is the attachment. So that's gonna be our trigger, sorry, our loop through attachments here. All right, and this should satisfy now the complete action in order for me to forward an invoice or a receipt to the app and allow it to add it automatically to our database. Let's give it a test. So I'm gonna head over here to the email trigger, copy our email address. I'm gonna to head to my email where I already have a receipt waiting for me. And I'm gonna go ahead and forward this receipt to that special email address. Then we're gonna hit send and it's sending, message sent. Let's head back to our app. We're gonna click through a couple of things here to see if it gets triggered. It was enabled, so that's good. Sometimes I forget to enable my actions. There we go. So it says just now, so it's running. Okay, it was successful, great. So if I click on the run history, okay, we see that there was actually two attachments in this email, right? One was an invoice <clears throat> and one was a receipt. And I really don't wanna add both of them, right? I only wanna add the one. 
So that's where our query is going to come in. And we see that it found two attachments. It cycled through them. It found that they were receipts, right? It grabbed the invoice number. And then we see that only one row was added because at some point it recognized that the invoice number was the same from the first time it looped through the, uh, the attachments. So now if I go to my data table, I should see that that's in there and it is. My file is somewhere in here. And it found the name of the company, my invoice number, the address of the company, the date which I paid, the amount that I paid, all the good things, right? And if I head to my layout, we should see that in there at the top of the list. Boom, there it is, my invoice, and all the details thereof. So that's amazing. We have this new workflow triggered by an email. All we have to do is forward our receipts to that email address, and it's automatically going to add them to our app. So if you work for a company, you can provide that email address to your employees. And so that way they can all forward their invoices to that email address and then they'll all be compiled into your database for the app that is shared across the company. And there's so much more you can do with the email trigger that we didn't even talk about today. For example, you could just focus on the content of the email, not even have to worry about the attachments. And so based on who the email is being sent to or the body of the email, you can analyze it with AI. For example, in our workflow, we're working at the attachments right now, but like maybe we're concerned with who sent the email and based upon what department that user belongs to, we can email their supervisor that they just submitted an expense, right? Through something like that, we would just add a query to the end of our flow here, where we would query our users table and we would filter our users table to where the email address of our users table is the person who sent the email, is our trigger from email, right? And so now we have the context of that user and we don't have to match multiple because it's only going to find one person let's say and then we can look up the department right or look up their supervisor so if we did a lookup right we could look up into that user and grab their um their role or the department or their supervisor's email let's say let's pretend this is their supervisor's email and then we could then send a new email to the lookup of the email, our subject could be new expense. And in our body, we could say, hey, so-and-so just submitted an expense, go into the app to approve it. So again, a lot you can do here just based off of a singular email trigger. If you have any questions on how to use the email trigger in your own app, feel free to leave me a comment below. And as always, thanks for watching.